The evening skies were full of clouds. Pegasi had brought dozens of them, and most were full of huddled refugees. Other town's ponies had fled north by hoof, or ridden the awful tide to higher ground in makeshift rafts and boats. But not nearly enough had made it. Thank goodness you're okay. Luna galloped through the castle and found her way to the roof of one of Candelot's many spires. She fixed her stance, set her gaze on the horizon, and ignited her horn. The vast, silvery moon slowly crept up over the horizon, bathing the night in soft moonlight and calling forth long, translucent shadows. Luna's own shadow on the parapets grew a second horn, which then split into a branched antler. The shadow of her mane vanished, and the shadow of her chin sprouted a short, tufted beard. The distorted silhouette stroked its chin with an eagle-taloned paw, and then spoke. Luna, you seem troubled. Do you want to talk about it? Luna's back twitched. She gritted her teeth. We have nothing to say to creatures of thy ilk, Discord. Oh, now that hurts. The shadow peeled away from the wall and inflated into full and opaque depth. Discord wiped away the black covering him with a swipe of his leonine paw, revealing himself in all his patchwork chimerical glory. I'm actually a very good listener, you know. In fact, I was listening the whole time I was turned to stone. <laughs> he gave a toothy grin and chuckled. Luna kept her back to the Draconicus, but her eyes widened. The whole... Yes, indeed. It's just incredible the meetings ponies will have around stone statues. The things they'll say, the things they'll do. <laughs> Luna's eyes blazed white. Her mane blew back from an unseen tempest, and her voice took on a booming echo. Do not toy with us, demon! The outburst blew Discord's flesh away like dry leaves in a windstorm, leaving his implausible skeleton exposed. Now, now, there's no need to get all royal on me. We villains have to look out for each other, you know. I am not a villain. <sighs> Luna, please. We're both ex-convicts here. You don't have to pretend. Leave us. Remember what I said, Luna. Look. He snapped his fingers and was gone. Alone once more, Luna looked up at the moon she'd escaped. So familiar, and yet so cold, and so distant, and so heavy with memories of past hurt. She sighed. <sighs> the bus route did not go directly to Maple Street. Instead, it let out a whole street earlier, which meant Megan was about a half a block from her apartment building when the world went quiet. The silence had fallen subtly with the perpetual noises of the city night being subtracted one by one. Now, on the vacant sidewalk 
next to the empty street. The falling rain made the only sounds. No cars or buses or subways provided background roar. No sirens or horns or burglar alarms or gunshots rang out. There was just the white noise hiss and patter of the rain, as constant and chaotic as television static. Megan shuffled to a halt, unable to find the strength to walk under the weight of the silence. Hello? Nothing. Hello? She repeated, louder this time. She prayed for someone to answer, even with shouted abuse. No answer came. Megan pulled her raincoat close and hugged herself. The damp chill in the air suddenly felt bone deep. A shift in some filth lodged in a sewer drain made a splash, and Megan jerked around to face it fast enough for her heel to kick up a fan of water from the puddle at her feet. Hello? Back the way she'd been facing, a whistling fast descent ended in a massive crash in a nearby alleyway. A trash can and assorted debris tumbled out into the street, propelled by a gust of multi-hued smoke. Megan turned back around too fast and slipped off her feet, sitting down hard in a shallow puddle. She could feel the aftershocks of the blast through her palms as she pushed herself standing again. Her ears were ringing, but the silence had already returned. No car alarms had been set off. No day shift workers were shouting from their windows. Nothing. Not even a stray cat. Hello? Anybody? Megan wiped her hands on her jeans and then slipped her right hand into her coat pocket. She squeezed the black plastic rectangle there and felt its reassuring heft. She squeezed the thing harder when the rain-accented stillness was broken again, this time by the sound of something moving in the alley. Megan walked forward with a dreamer's gait, tugged toward the impact site by some intangible yet unbreakable pull. She held her breath as she turned to look into the alley. The whatever it was had cratered the asphalt, scarred the walls, and scattered trash in all directions. The closest streetlight had lost its bulb, the narrow space infested with shadows. Megan stared into the darkness, trying to pick out any detail she could. Uh, yes. She swallowed hard and willed her voice to stop quavering. Is someone there? There was movement in the alley. Something low to the ground shifted and turned. It's dark. A car had a big stray dog and drove away. Despite the plausible notion, Megan drew the device from her coat pocket. She slowly stepped closer, still in the grip of nightmare logic curiosity. When Megan got within three paces of the thing, it jerked up onto all fours and raised its head. Huge eyes, the color of raw liver, caught what little light reached them. The eyes widened, and the dog surged forward. With the click of a switch, the stun gun pumped three million volts through the no-doubt rabbit dog. Harsh, crackling blue light brightened the alley like a camera flash, casting everything into stark relief for an instant. Ouch! said the creature. What the hey? It wasn't a dog. Megan's world lurched. She stumbled backward, letting her weapon drop. Uh, no. She was gasping for breath. Her lungs refused to fill. It, it can't be. She felt icy adrenaline soak her veins. It can't be. Black smoke seeped into the edges of her vision. Her pupils were pinpricks. It can't. Megan's knees gave out. The pavement rushed up to meet her. The 
creature trotted out of the alley and looked down at the fallen being who had just slapped a lightning bolt into her hide. It's okay. Rainbow Dash nudged Megan onto her stomach with her hooves and slipped her front legs under the human's arms. <laughs> I didn't think you were real either. 